Today we speak about the Git and version control. Please. How many of you already did something about the Git version control system? OK, sorry for uh, the repetition, if any. So I'll start a little bit uh, uh, from a scenario, uh, a motivation. So if I want to be really precise and really sure that all the work I did, a little bit paranoically, uh, all the work I did will not be loose in any occasion, what I need to do? So if I'm working solo and I have only one computer, to be really sure that all the work, a project I work on is saved, I need at least a backup, different saved version of the project, and early and frequent saving. And, can I, and I can use to do this external hard drive, external pen drive, Dropbox, Google Drive, and something like that. The problem that can arise are what if I forget to save a specific version of project? Maybe I started the project six months ago and I need the, the version of three months ago or one hour ago. I did save it, so I didn't have that version. Similarly, what if I delete or I lose a previous version? We have uh, a price. Is this a, uh, OK. Um, OK, so I'm working solo. I have one computer. I have these two uh, problems, you can say. Now, if I'm working solo, please. If I'm working, say, so more than one computer, I need the same things as before, but duplicated from each computer that I have. I have a backup on both computers. I need a different saved version of both computers. I need early and frequent saving on both computers. And I need to uh, make an arrangement with myself for some convention upon uh, file, na file names. I have to I choose to, I don't know, name a project here with the date of today and uh, the name of the project and the other computer, I need to have the same convention. I can uh, use the same things as before, plus a shared folder to share the documents between the computer. I have, in this case, more problem. Uh, what if I have different projects in the shared workspace, projects that I have on this computer here and uh, I didn't have uh, here, for example? This project, I should remember to move everything from one side to the other. Maybe this, this computer here is in my office and this is my laptop, so I move uh, with this. I work uh, in, at home or at a, room, at a classroom or, or something like that. And what if I forget to copy one version between computer? These are all human problems, but they are possible problems. I, here, I don't have the laptop, and uh, I don't have uh, one piece of information that I need to, to proceed my work, with my work. So things are then terrible when I'm working team. Maybe I'm here with my two computers, there is another person here with other two computers, and a third person here maybe in, uh, in England or something like that in, in the world. So for each of these, uh, to be really precise and really uh, sure to have every single version of my software, I need backup, I need different saved version, I need early and frequent saving, but I need also shared convention of file names. I have to use the same file convention, naming convention here, 
here and here. Maybe we are in three places different, so we are time zone different. So a convention should work everywhere. And to share files, we can use USB memory stick, or external drive, Dropbox, folder, emails, or something like that. But here problems arise a lot of more than before. So what if a team member forget to save or to share a specific version and someone then needs this version? Or someone deletes or loses a version? And then what happens if someone forgets to share a specific version with other people? Other issue, who has the latest version here? It's me or it's another person? Who is working on the latest piece of technology? We don't know. We share it with Sandy Mays around. Who has the right to edit each single file? Maybe I don't want that someone can edit a file, but only read a file. And how to ensure that everyone see the latest and up-to-date version of everything? Here, with emails, Dropbox, and whatever, we cannot assure this. And how to handle conflicts? If I edit a file, line three, of file main.py, and another person edit the same file in the same line, and we send them by mail, or we store in Dropbox. Who has the right version? Is mine the right version, or is the one of the other person the right version? So to solve all this problem, version control system was born a lot of years ago. Version control system born to record every changes to a file or a set of files over time from creation of the project up to the last day of this project, so that you can call a specific version, even the first one of eight years ago, in any moment. We had three generations in the history, we can say, local, file store, local version control system that works on a computer only, centralized version control system, and now we are moving to distributed version control system like Git that I present you today and that will, you will use to handle all your projects for the exam. So to, to speak about version control system, I need to introduce you some basic concept. The first basic concept is the concept of a repository that in this slide are always depicted this way. The repository is the place, the physical place, where you store all your work that contains every single version of your work that ever existed, like files, structure of the directory, history, who changes what. And the repository can be shared with the whole team. It's not mine, it's shared, the repository. My snapshot of the repository, <coughs> typically containing the latest version, is called the working copy. The working copy is the place on my computer where you change your project, your file, your document. It's private, it's not shared by the team, and it also contains some metadata that uh, come from the repository, like uh, uh, a file has been modified by who, when, what line, a file is new or is old, and a file is deleted, and so on. To move thing from a working copy to the repository, there is an operation that is called commit. The commit operation is the atomic operation that modifies the repository. So it takes your latest version of the code or whatever and add it to the central repository, to the remote to the repository, to the shared repository, so that everyone can take that specific version. During the commit operation, you are required to provide a log message, a message in plain English or Italian, in which you are explaining what are your operations, what you did on the project. Maybe you edited 100 files, but you 
end up to implement functionality number three. So in your log message, you can wrote implement functionality number three. So a, a summary of all your modification for that specific change. The opposite operation is called update. It takes the latest version, one version, one specific version, that typically is the latest, from the repository, and it updates your working copy. That is where you effectively can change things, add file, edit file, whatever. The update operation typically merge possible changes in the repository with your local changes. Maybe someone in the repository uh, add a file, so this file will be added in your working copy. Maybe someone in the repository add uh, line 11 in the main.py file, and you're working on the main.py file, but not uh, in line 11, line one, for example. So it uh, try to merge uh, to add this modification to your specific file, typically automatically. In centralized version control system, this is the typical scenario. Each developer, each computer has a working copy, and there is one and only one central server, central repository. Everyone commit on the central repository and update from the central repository. This is easy, but it's a problem here, this, the fact that in centralized version control system, only one repository can exist. To overcome this problem, maybe an industry needs a, a central repository for development and another for release to public. In this way, it's not possible, easily possible. To overcome these and other problems, distributed version control system were born. In distributed version control system, each computer has a working copy and a repository. So all clients, or computer, has a full copy of the repository and the working copy in which you work effectively. Then typically, it's not mandatory here, you can have one or more central remote repository. A repository on a server, on some services on the internet in which you can put your code and other people can read, download, and so on. In this way, it's possible to have more than, more than one of these. In distributed version control system, we need other two concepts. We need a way to synchronize repositories. We need a way to synchronize this repository with this one, or this repository with this one. And the operation that take uh, the synchronize my local repository with a remote repository, maybe on an online service, is called push. So you have a working copy, you're working, you commit on your local repository, and then you push on a remote repository. The opposite operation is called pull. From a remote repository, you pull things to your local repository, and then you update the working copy. This works for every distributed control system. In particular, we speak about Git that is not the only one version control system distributed. That well, was born in 2005 for hosting the, kernel, the Linux kernel. It was created by the same person who created Linux. Uh, was born for to be used by via, via command line, but a lot of uh, graphical environment now exist. It has a website. Uh, it's free, open source, uh, uh, FPCent, whatever. Here we have uh, some people that uses Git. Just to name someone. How to use Git? In this course, Git is already installed in uh, Ladispe computer and is integrated in PyCharm. You have to uh, download Git on your computer and install Git on your computer, and then it's already integrated in PyCharm. It's available for all platforms, typically on Linux or Mac. It's already installed. On Windows, you have to install explicitly. 
to check if you have uh, uh, git, you can open a command prompt or a terminal and type git. If give you an error, you don't have git. If type, if show you something like this, uh, so you have uh, effectively git installed in your computer. Now, sorry. Now, I try to show you an example, a complete example of how to work with Git in PyCharm and with the Lix terminal. In these slides, there is all, all the things that I say are reported here, but I switch to a, we can say, real environment. So I, I try to be two person. One uses PyCharm on Windows, so I can show you how to use Git in PyCharm. The command that we need are the one I already told you. Commit from a working copy to a repository, push to sync a local repository with a remote repository, pull to do the opposite operation, and we will use Git. So this is one person, maybe I'm here, I'm using Git here with PyCharm, and this is another person maybe not here, and I'm using it from Linux, so you have a, also a different environment. So we would like to, we would like to, sorry, I try to, we would like to create a new Python project and share it with, in Git. So I create an empty project, I call Git trial, for example. And I add a Python file. Main.py. And I wrote here print uh, hello world, just to. OK, so I created my program. I did whatever what I want to, did, to do. So I can, and now I want to share this on Git so that the other person here can take the project and work on it. So the first thing that I need to do is to enable version control system inside PyCharm. PyCharm has a VCS menu, and there is a, a menu voice that is enable version control integration. You can it, and it asks you for which version control system you would like to use. It supports some version control system. One is Git, so you choose Git, and it told you created Git repository in a directory. So if, if, I open, if I open the directory, you can see here that there is a .git folder. This .git folder does not exist before the creation, the creation of the repository, and it contains all the information you need for using Git in this project. If you delete this, this folder, you cannot use Git in this project. You have to start again from scratch. You remove Git from this project. It's hidden, so you, can, you should not uh, delete by error. Then I need uh, to perform a the commit operation. Before performing the commit operation, I needed to tell uh, Git that I want to add this specific file under version control. By default in Git, no file is included. So every file that you include is not under version control. If you want a file, you have to select the file or a set of files and explicitly add to version control. So if I select these or multiple files, it's, it's the same. And from the VCS menu, there is a git menu, and then there is an add command. When you add a file on git, PyCharm highlights the file in green. Now I can perform the commit operation on my local repository. 
So again, VCS, git, there is a commit file command. So I see here my file that I already added. Then I add a commit message, the log message. And I wrote my first commit. And then I press commit. Here PyCharm told you that one file committed with your message. Perfect. So now we have this file in my local repository. Now, I have everything on my computer. I need to share this on the internet so that someone else can, add, can take this program and do whatever he want. So in this course, we will use GitHub to storing your project. Every group will have a private repository that will be visible for groups. For each group, can view only the one, the, the, its own repository. And from the teachers, we can see all the groups repository. And in a organization that is called MEI 2016, that now, OK. Now here, I'm creating a remote repository. So here in GitHub, you have a new repository button. You press it. And it asks you for a repository name. Um, in this case, we can add, add git trial. And then ask you for the type of repository, if public or private. A private repository is only visible to you and to person that you choose. A public repository is public on the internet. So in this case, uh, I did a public repository. I do a public repository. GitHub give us 30 private repository for this course for free. Otherwise, private repository uh, have to be paid by single uh, individuals. So I can create a repository. And that's it. We create a repository on GitHub at this address, that is github.com MEI2016 git trial. And here, there is some instruction how to uh, put things on this repository. So back in, in PyCharm, we can perform the push operation. We already committed our file. We have a push command. And the push operation asks you for one thing the first time. It asks you to define a remote repository. Because he does, it doesn't know how to put, to synchronize the local repository with. This doesn't know the address of the remote repository. So we can define the remote by the URL. So we take the URL from here, from GitHub, from here, we copy and paste, paste here. And uh, uh, PyCharm suggests you a name for this, rep for this uh, repository that is by default origin. In, by convention, in Git, the first remote repository is called origin, but you can choose whatever name you want. It's a name that you use on your computer. You press OK. It, it checks if the repository exists, it's reachable on the internet, and so on. And then it appears your commit message, if you have one, more than one, Every commit message appears here, and all the file you edited or added in the, in the project. And then you can press push, wait. And then it tells you that is, everything is successful. So if we go back here and refresh the page, And wait. 
Okay, we see that we have uh, my main.py uh, script with one commit, that is the one I already I, uh, just did, by me. And here we can also see all the commit history, that in this case is only one commit. And we can also go through the history to get a specific commit and see what happens, what changes here. So here, show one change file with one addition because I add a one file, one line in one file. So now the project is online. So the other person, we can say the, the Linux uh, The Linux person can take uh, wait, can take the project. Okay, from here I show you the terminal, but it's it's the same. <coughs> so I'm okay. I go to the desktop. Okay, to take an existing repository. To take an existing repository and create a local repository and a working copy, in Git there is a command that is git clone. The same happens in PyCharm. There is a clone from version control system. Git clone what the address of the remote repository. So I go back to the browser. I paste again uh, this, uh, and I hope that, uh, no, https github.com slash mei 2016 uh, git trial dot git. It's quite, uh, difficult to speak with this noise uh, in background. If you are not interested, please. So the git clone operation take the repository from the remote server and uh, create a local copy and a working copy from the repository. If you perform this operation, it's told you cloning into git trial, that's the default name uh, from the repository because uh, it uses this name for creating a folder with exact name. If you want to specify a name for your project on your computer, you have to write here. For example, it's git uh, experiment uh, one. It perform a clone from remote to the from the remote repository to the Git experiment one folder. I can do it; it's not a problem. And for example, you see on the desktop uh, two folder. One is the first Git trial with the my main.py file that contains uh, my printl word and uh, the other that is exactly identical. There is a main.py with hello hello world inside. So uh, I remove um, git experiment. So now I, on Windows, I created a project, shared a project. Here I took the project. Now I can edit the project from here and redo the, the same path. So I open the main.py, and for example, I print, I add another line, print, uh, this is uh, an edit. We can save this program, and we need uh, to perform uh, the same operation we did before. We need to add the file, because we edited the file, and we need to commit the file, and then we need to push the file to the remote repository. In Git, and 
both on uh, the command line and in PyCharm, there is a way to perform a commit and an add in one operation. It is a checkbox on the graphical interface, or here is git commit minus AA, that is for add, minus M, that is for log message. So uh, add another line. Another print line, another print, B. Uh, sorry, in the right folder. And it say that one file changes to insertion and one deletion. Git status. Okay, git status tell you the state of your repository. Here, there is a main.py file that is a temporary file created by gedit and it is in red so it's not uh, added to the repository and we can do git push we don't need to specify the remote repository because we take everything from them from it it asks for it asks me for a username and password to access github so i insert my own and it performed the push operation. So now if we go back here and refresh this page, we see that the message is changed, is another print. If we open the main.py file, we see that there is the updated file. So now we have on the remote repository, an update version of my file. I want to take this update on my computer, on this Windows computer inside PyCharm. So to do this, here we have still the whole domain.py file in my computer. It's on remote, it's on the internet, the, the new file we can say. We need to perform the pull operation. So git again, pull. It asks from where do you want to pull from origin because it's the only one repository that we remote repository that we had. We can press pull. It warns you. And if we open the main.py file, we see that there is the second line added. And this is the whole procedure. Notice that I told you that we have the commit operation, the push operation, and then we have the pull operation and the update operation. Here I did not perform the update operation because in Git, the pull also perform the update on the, of the working copy. Not only synchronize the two repositories, but also update the working copy by default. So in Git is commit and add, push, and then pull. It's the three basic uh, command that you need. Plus clone, that is to add on your computer an existing project from an existing repository. In PyCharm, just to, just to show you, here there is a checkout from version control where you can select git and again add the URL and uh, the directory name in which you want the project to be cloned. In this case, if I don't change the directory name, it, wo it warns me that the same directory already existed because I already have a git trial directory on my desktop in this moment. So, open this again. Now, suppose that here, sorry. Here, in the Git trial, we would like to add um, a to-do.txt file, and that we don't want to add this file never to the remote server. I want that this file is in this folder, but only mine. I can then create. 
here a file with a specific name that is dot git ignore that in Windows it doesn't like. Okay, um, let's do from, from here. Okay, imagine that we here, we would like to add a to-do.txt file. So I add the to-do.txt, I open the to-do.txt file, and I add this, wait, this is my private to-do list for this project. Do not commit. Okay? So I create a, a text file. I add some information inside. Now I don't want, I have on my, in my folder, I have the main.py and the to-do.txt. I never want that the to-do.txt go on the central repository. So I can create a .gitignore file and add inside this .gitignore file the to-do.txt name. And this is, could be a file, or a directory, or every txt files, or every whatever you want. If I save this file and add this file to version control, to git, with git add. You see that here, with git status, that show the status of the git repository, we have only a new file, only one, that is this git ignore, and no to do.txt file, while here, on the disk, I still have this to do.txt file. The .git ignore file is a special file of Git that must be committed to work and pushed on the repository that allow you to specify all the file that you want to ignore, not to add never, ever in your repository. So in this case, I don't want that the to do.txt file will be included. And up to this .git ignore file exists, the file will not be included. Even if I type git add everything, the file is invisible for, for, for uh, git. So I can commit the dot add .git ignore. Then again, git push. It asks me for username and password, then gain. Okay. And if you go on the website, we see that we have this dot git ignore file, and then if we if I did pull if I do pull on PyCharm, it, uh, I take this file, and the .txt file present in this folder will never be committed and shared on uh, the remote repository. OK. Ah. So I told you that in this slide there is everything up to now. I did. Okay, there, are, there is one thing that can be can happen. Uh, 
we imagine that we, have in this, we are in this situation. We have two persons working on the same identical file, that main.py. I'm working here, now, on this file, on line two of this file, and the other person is working on the same identical line in the same identical moment. I complete my editing and commit and push. The other person, after my push, commit, uh, save the file, commit the file, and perform a push. In this situation, in that situation, what happens is this, that Git told you rejected. You cannot perform a push. Why? Because the version of the file in the second computer is not updated anymore with the central repository because the other person update the information there. So it warns you that you cannot push anything because you need you are not on the latest version of the of the project. So you have to do a pull before and in doing a pull you have two possible um, situations. The first one is that git merge these two files. Maybe you edited the main.py in line two and the other person edited uh, main.py in line 11. So no problem, the, li the 11 line is added to your file. Perfect. In some other cases, maybe you are editing a specific line, line number three, and the other person has edited the line number three of the same file, you have a conflict. A conflict is indicated by this message in Git that is automatic merge failed, fix conflict by end, and then commit and push the result. And conflicts in Git are represented in this way. You have a log minus and the hid interstation with the code of the first person, line three of Marco. Then a series of equal and the same line, the conflicted line, line three of Dave, and this other line, a line similar to this. You have to choose what to do here, remove all the stuff added by Git, save the file, commit, and push the result. By the end, you have to choose what you want to do with the file. This happens quite frequently, especially working in groups. Then here we have uh, uh, other commands. And one thing that I didn't say here. Git is structured, you have to imagine Git structured like a tree. The main uh, branch of the tree is, called, is always called master. You have a tree on your computer and a tree on the remote server. So you have a master branch on your computer and a master branch on the server. They are not, they cannot be identical. You can work on your master branch and then push on the branch number three on the remote, or you can have a branch named differently on your local uh, on your local repository and uh, push on the master branch. The way of working on Git is that uh, everything in the master branch is what works. Then if you want to add a feature to your project, you should branch all your project, work on a new branch called feature number one, and merge the two branches. We are not asking you for doing this in this course. If you want to do this, it's good. I told you what, what a branch is, is because in your project, you have to host the source code of your project on Git, on a repository, and then you have to host a website describing your project here in the same identical repository but this website will be hosted in another branch that will will uh, it will be called um, gh pages branch
and, and now we see them. Um, but well, uh, there are a lot of hosted Git, Git uh, services. One is GitHub, but there is also Bitbucket, GitLab, uh, Codeplex by Microsoft, uh, and so on. Uh, they have different uh, uh, features. GitHub, when you register in GitHub, it gives you an infinite free public repository. If you want to have one private repository, you have to pay. Bitbucket works differently, give you unlimited free and private repository, but only for team smaller than three, and so on. GitLab is totally free. We will use GitHub, well, because it's really popular and used here uh, now, and uh, because it gives us uh, the GitHub pages feature, that we use here, that you will use here, and uh, it will provide us with uh, private repository for this course for your group. More, if you want, uh, you can register with your .polito.it .polito email address and ask for five private repository for free for your own private repository for uh, to education.github.com. GitHub Pages is a service uh, maintained by the GitHub people that we will use to host your project website. That is all the deliverables, the final video, and so on. All websites will be reachable from mei2016.github.io slash your project name when you have uh, whatever you have you have a project name. Here there is some fuck. And before showing you GitHub pages, how to create a GitHub pages, uh, I'll give you an homework that is required by uh, Wednesday. You have to create a GitHub account and wrote your GitHub username on the shared Google Doc because we need to invite you to the MEI 2016 organization, and we need to provide you with the repository for your project. And each group will see only their own repository. So do this before Wednesday. Otherwise, you cannot work toward the deliverable number one. GitHub pages. From a repository, there is a pages.github.com website that explains you what a GitHub Pages is. GitHub Pages are static website in a branch, in, in the GH pages branch of the repository. Here there is some instruction. To create a GitHub pages, I try to create a GitHub pages here. You can, you have two ways. The first one is automatic way. There is a tutorial online that creates the GH page, uh, pages branches and adds some information in these branches and so on. The other way is to create, in your project repository, the GH pages branch and add to this branch HTML, CSS, and JavaScript file that describe your own site, website. And these pages will be published to the mei2016.github.io slash the name of your project. So, the automatic way is to go to in the settings of the repository. Here, you have an automatic page generator. If you launch this generator, it asks you for a project name, it, try, it asks you to complete a home page. So you can add a project name, uh, my project, 
uh, uh, a tagline, a body I can welcome to my project, for example, to my project. I can delete all these. And uh, this is my project. And it allows you to choose from a series of existing templates, this one. And it shows you a brief uh, preview. If you don't want to add uh, HTML, CSS file, you can use uh, an existing template. There are some of them. You can choose whatever you want. I don't know. And then when, when you choose your template, you can do publish page. At the mi2016.github.io slash git trial, you will see published your project, your site with the information that, we, that I added. To edit this file, there is no automatic generator. You have to go to the GH pages branch. And you see it adds here an index HTML file, some style sheet, images, and whatever. And you have to open the HTML file. And we will show you HTML in the course briefly and edit this file, commit, push. It's a normal repository. It's a normal Git repository. Instead of adding Python files, you have to add HTML files. Or you can also edit from here. You can also edit from here the file, and then from here, with a commit message, commit and push on the remote repository your files. Just to have an idea, at this address, you, you can see all the, you have, you, we will prepare something like this, possibly better than this. These are all the projects of the last year. This is a presentation page. All the projects are here. This is the last year. A format, we would like to change this. And if you press, there is a brief description of the project, and you see that someone create their own style for the website. Other person, like uh, this, choose an existing template, or this one also is an existing template. And here, we can take, for example, Marco Poli. Here, at, they had their documentation, all the deliverables. This is the vision. These are team members. And, uh, OK. Here they are the, the, three reposit the three deliverables of these projects in this way. Other groups did something different. For example, I, I took two projects uh, randomly. Uh, there is always the mandatory video for, for the exam, presentation video from the exam. And then in Seymour, you see this is the deliverable number one, number two. Uh, this is the deliverable number three in this other way. This is not a good way. Please avoid. Uh, this is the deliverable number three, and so on. All deliverables are HTML pages inside the project website. We does not evaluate the graphical appearance of this website. They can be also ugly. 
really we don't evaluate anything. We only require you that deliverables are quickly and easily found in the website. So a, a, a menu, a link that easily brings to the right deliverables because we look for the content of the deliverables on your website. So it can be more or less beauty or ugly is not really, for example, this is not so beautiful. But the deliverables are here. So immediately we can go to the right deliverable for evaluating it. So this is, it's important that deliverables are present and are properly present instead of the graphical aspect. Then if it's beauty, it's better for you. All the websites are public, so everyone on the internet with this MEI 2016 for you address can see your website. So please be sure what you write upon them. And this website, we will also use this website for the showcase. So please be sure what you put on this website before September. And same happens for projects of two years ago. There is an MEI 2014 GitHub.io page. And this year will be uh, 2016. Now we don't have the, the website, the intro website. So. If you have no experience with Git, a part of my brief description, you can also try Git online. This is um, there is a safe environment in which you can try to use Git that is try.github.io, in which you, in 15 minutes, it help you practice with Git. The commit, push, uh, pull, clone command that we see. Here there are some references, and if you want a um, graphical environment to use Git, with Git, Apart from uh, PyCharm, uh, there is plenty of libraries, of uh, applications for uh, Windows, Linux, and Mac uh, system. Here in the Git website. <laughs> so, do you have any question? No, pull, ah, sorry, see. Uh, he asked me if, uh, if I probably understand, if I have two file, I, I don't know, the main.py, two person that edits the same file, one edits line three and the other edits line 11, okay, when the one that edits line 11 go the pull from the other if this file will be overwritten or not, is this the question? No, the file is not overwritten because Git look for the content of the file. So it understands that the line tree is a new line for my own version. So it adds line tree to my project, to my file, and preserve line number 11. So it look for the content. Any other question? Yeah. How to create a Windows file with Windows? With Windows, here, Okay, here you should have, uh, in some places, if I add here uh, 
uh, trial.txt file I want to ignore. Here, you should have a way to say ignore this file. In which way now? It's a good question. I don't want to add this file. Otherwise, you can with um, if you open a, um, let me try in this way. No, and um, if you. Open the file with a text editor, it should be able to save without text name. Yes. If you open with Notepad, for example, you can save the file without the name. So you can create a file named uh, whatever you want, dot git ignore, then with Notepad or something like that, you remove it, uh, whatever you want and leave on dot git ignore and Windows accept the, the file. And there should be a way inside by charm to do this, but uh, I have to look around uh, to, to find it. Any other question? So please create your own GitHub account, username, complete the shared Google Docs with project composition and uh, uh, project ideas in which we required you, just to recall, your name and surname, an email address, the GitHub username, and your expected role in the project. Someone, some groups already did this, some other no. So please, everyone, by Wednesday, complete these two tasks. Okay, so for today, I stop here. Have a good night.